Hello and welcome to my channel, On the Hook Crochet, where we talk about wearable crochet style. My name is Jeannie and let's find out what's on the hook today. First of all, I want to make sure that you get a crochet project and crochet while we're talking to each other. And actually, if you're a knitter, go ahead and knit. It's okay. I'm hoping to find out how to knit this year. I'm really excited about the prospect of learning to knit and I hope I have the time to do that. I have a lot of things on my plate this year and I want to talk about that too as well. A question and answer period, some uh, progress on my projects that I'm working on, and of course the giveaway winners will be announced today. Tomorrow is Valentine's Day and I hope you're planning a wonderful day even if it's just alone and working on a project or spending some time with your uh, favorite person. You can certainly do that. That would be a great way to celebrate Valentine's Day or to go out to dinner. Um, who knows? Just lots of things that you can do. I think Valentine's Day is a wonderful day of the year just to call your children or call your spouse and or your boyfriend or girlfriend and say, Happy Valentine's Day. I love you. Today is a very special day. Some of y'all remember from my last video. Today is the one year anniversary of my being on YouTube and the very first video that I produced last year was on February 13 and it was about this scarf and I'm wearing this in honor of my anniversary today. This is a scarf made from a pattern by Nastasia. I will put the link down below. I've done this many times. I really, really love this scarf. It's one of my favorites in the closet. It's lightweight. It's made from silk yarn that I purchased from Expression Fiber Arts from Chandy over there. Um, they do make beautiful, beautiful yarns. And I just, I don't know why I did it, but I bought a hank of silk yarn and I decided to make a scarf from it. So I found this pattern and I've really enjoyed wearing this. And what I did this week was I blocked this scarf. I've never blocked it before and I blocked it along with my blue scarf that I made last week. I blocked it at the same time I blocked this beautiful scarf made with knit crate yarn called Empire and it came out in the knit crate box last month and I swapped with someone to get this blue yarn. It is so gorgeous. I really love it and it's so comfortable. I really enjoy wearing it. But I blocked this scarf and made it extra long and at the same time I actually blocked this scarf because I had my blocks out so I thought I'm just going to block that scarf. And it actually opened up the stitches quite a bit and I'll show that to you. This is, um, well it has a pico edging on it as well and the stitching is very wide open. It's a very light scarf. You can wear it all times of the year and this is what it looks like blocked and I've never really gotten this part to, to separate. It separates pretty well when you put, put it around your neck it tends to draw up like that but it's okay. I did block it and it got quite a bit larger than it was. So that's what I did with this scarf this week and at the same time I blocked this this scarf too. So I really enjoyed wearing this. This is the anniversary of my YouTube channel, so I'm wearing this in honor of that. I hope y'all are having a wonderful week. I had a really great week this week. And I made quite a bit of progress on a couple of projects that I'm working on. And if you are one of my followers on Instagram, you will have seen some pictures out there of some of the projects that I'm working on. Um, first of all, I want to show you a couple things that I received in the mail. I rarely go to my post office box. It's out of the way and it's not really on my way to anywhere. So I rarely go to it and I have to do better than that this, this year. <laughs> I'll have to make more visits to my uh, post office box. But I did receive three things in the mail. I'm going to quickly show those to you. Uh, this is from Nikki's Crochet Nook and I believe she might have made this card. It's very, very cute. I really like it. It's a little heart with a basket below it and uh, a really nice note inside. So thank you, Nikki for sending that beautiful card. I love handmade cards. If that's indeed what this is, there's no name on the back, so I assume that it is handmade. And thank you so very much for that. I also received a gift from Charlene's Crochet Corner. It's Charlene Crochet Corner is what she has written on here. So I'll put a link down 
in the description box to everybody that I can find that has sent me something. She sent a, a little notepad with my initial on it for Jeannie, J for Jeannie, and some beautiful paper inside with a J at the top. I really like that. It's so dressy and so sweet. I'll put this right over here with my pads that I have that I write notes to people on. And if you've gotten anything from me, like if you want to give away, um, I like to write a note to everyone and thank them for watching my channel. That was from Charlene Van Orsdale. And again, she is with Charlene's Crochet Corner. And I'll see if I can find the link and put it down in the description box. Thank you so much, Charlene, for sending that to me. Also, from Nancy at Nan's Next Knots. She always sends out these beautiful stitch markers and I received one for Valentine's Day. I wanna show this to you. It is quite gorgeous. It is red and red and red and at the bottom it has a little heart on it that says made with love. And I will really probably put this on one of my projects today. I wanted to do that, but I wanted to leave it on the card so I remember to say Hello and thank you so much to Nancy at Nan's Next Knots. I really like her channel. I watch it every time one comes out. I love to watch her with her stitch markers and also her beautiful crochet. And she does a very, very nice job. And she uses a lot of Expression Fiber Arts yarn as well. And um, I just remember that from way back when I first started watching Nancy's videos. So. Um, Check her out. I'll put her link down in the description box and you can watch her videos as well. Thank you very much, Nancy, for that beautiful stitch marker. All right, now I want to talk about a couple of other things. Um, first of all, this is my one year anniversary and I have 6,630 subscribers. That is amazing to me. I was so excited when I got my first hundred. I thought that would never happen. And so I've grown through the year and I have put out at least two to three, sometimes four videos a week, mostly two to three videos a week. And hopefully I'm bringing you something that you can use that's inspiring to you. I have an Etsy shop now. I have an Instagram account. So I'm working on lots of things, trying to um, grow my little business here. And I also have another business that I work on as well. So I'm a busy bee, as y'all know. But I wanted to ask you if you haven't subscribed, if you would, that allows YouTube to find other people that might enjoy watching this channel. And another thing I wanted to say was that I have never monetized my channel. That means, if y'all know what that means, that means that I don't run commercials at the beginning of my videos. As you know, when you click on it, I'm right there and there's no intro, there's no commercials at the very beginning. Not that there's anything wrong with that. And what I have found out is if you're not monetized, then your channel is, is not as uh, widely proliferated as if you are monetized. And I totally get that. They're, you know, they're trying to make money just like everybody else. But what they have done in the last month, as I've noticed, they have allowed the channel owner, which would be me, to control the types of commercials that are shown on, at the beginning of a video. And I considered it and not, and then I did, that I didn't. And so I've considered monetizing my channel, but not showing ads that are offensive or sensitive, have a sensitive nature. I'm going to cut out all of those. So if you see something on my channel that is offensive to you, please let me know. I'm not going to allow political ads or ads about dating or other things. There are lots and lots of categories that I can just say no, 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 no. And that way I can control what is advertised on my videos. So I hope you all don't mind. I'm going to try it and if it doesn't work out, I'll just stop. But I do want to try to make a little tiny bit of money. You don't really make very much at all, but it does help um, pay the bills and it does help um, my channel to be a, what I consider a business. So if you'll bear with me and if you have any comments about it, you can leave comments on my videos. If you see an ad that you don't like or that it's very offensive to you, please let me know. I would like to know that. So that's enough about my one year anniversary. I'm excited to be here. I'm not going anywhere as far as I know, unless something happens to me, I will be continuing to do YouTube videos and all about crochet. I really love it. I love everything about crochet, as you know, 
and I'm concentrating on women's wearables and maybe even children's wearables, but they will be wearable crochet that you put on your body that you wear and that are in your wardrobe. So that's what I'm uh, concentrating on and I hope that's okay with y'all. You can always put a comment on my videos. I answer questions that come up there the best I can. I, if I've missed one, I'm so sorry. Uh, some of y'all email me directly. Some of you put questions in the comments and I'm glad to answer them if I know the answer. So just know that I do read your comments. I'm interested in what you have to say. And I have taken quite a few of your suggestions, one of which was the Orange and Onyx. It has a V-neck neckline, and I really like that. I'm glad that y'all suggested it. I like it because it's, it's a little more open, especially with spring coming. You can make V-neck sweaters, and they're not so hot. If you don't try to shape the neckline, then the sweater is going to be hot. So I'm going to concentrate on that, maybe cutting them a little bit lower, for the spring and summer so that they're not so hot. And I do want to uh, expand my horizons as far as the type of yarn that I select to make the sweaters. And I want to remake some of my sweaters that I've already released patterns for in different yarns and maybe different hook sizes. So that kind of shows you what you can do with one of my patterns. You don't have to make it exactly like I do. In fact, I encourage my pattern purchasers to experiment with different yarns and different hook sizes that would suit you, not suit me, but that would suit you. They're always designed so that you can make the sweaters fit you, and that is my focus. I have a couple of questions that I want to, actually three questions that I want to ask you, my subscribers, and if you would put the answers down in the comments, I would appreciate it, or you can send me an email to genie at onthehookcrochet.com. My address is written down in the description box, so you can look down there and catch me on email or just put a comment down in the comment box on the video. But I have three questions that I want to ask, and you can answer them all, none or one or two, however you want to do it. My first question is, when I do my 12 Days of Christmas videos this year, and I do plan to do those. Those will come out after Christmas and after all the hubbub is gone. My plan is to do a crochet along, and I've already kind of picked out what I want to do, And um, but I still have some ideas from subscribers that have, have sent me their suggestions, and I'm considering lots and lots of things. So if you have an idea, you can send me an email or put a comment down in the video section. But if you want to do a crochet along, please let me know. If that's really important to you, I need to know that because I don't want to spend time doing a crochet along. If y'all are too tired after Christmas to do anything like that, let me know. So crochet along, do you want one? And you can suggest something in there. And I would like for it to be a wearable. I'm not really excited about slippers, socks, and hats. I would rather not do those and wrist warmers. Uh, I would like to do something that you can wear, that you can wear, that might be beautiful to wear, but that doesn't take terribly long to make. And I know everybody else does reviews of yarn and all that, and that's fine, that's great. And I would like to do some of those myself. And I might order some new yarns that are out and um, actually crochet with them, give you an honest opinion about those. I would like to do that. And some hooks, I'd like to order some furl hooks and see what I think about those. I can't always just only use clover hooks. I know that there are other hooks out there that might be very comfortable in my hand. And as you all know from my last video, I've had a little bit of hand problem, but I did rest my hand for a whole day. I did not touch a crochet hook, and the next day I was fine. So I had just overdone it a little bit, and that's all that was wrong with my hands. So I'm not terribly worried about my hands right this minute. So let me know down in the comment section if you think that's a good idea. They would not come out on the same day every week, although that might be a kind of fun thing to do, like review on Tuesday or review on Wednesday, but these would be videos only about a review. They wouldn't be long 30 minute videos. They'd probably be pretty short. And I would just pick one or two yarns and go over what they, uh, how they crochet, how they look when they're crocheted, different, different stitches. Also, um, lots of things that I could review that have to do with crochet. I just 
um, instead of putting them in with my other videos, I would like to make short videos that maybe you could quickly watch and see what you think about reviews of yarn. And I would also like, this is um, kind of off the wall, but I would like to review some hand dyed yarns. If you're an indie dyer, you can send me a hank of yarn and I will review it for my, for my viewers. I'll also put a link to your Etsy shop if you have one or an email if you want to. Um, if you are in the hand dyeing business, you can do that. Um, if you have a big Etsy shop or a small Etsy shop, if you want me to review your yarn, I will be more than happy to do that. I love hand dyed yarns. I think they're gorgeous. I have always like to use those when I can. I also like to use yarns that are readily available for my patterns. And my goal is to make my patterns in a standard yarn that you can get um, either online easily or at a big box store. And then to make the pattern again in maybe a hand dyed yarn or a different size yarn, something not quite as easily available or maybe more expensive so that you can choose between one or the other. You can also go in your stash and make my patterns out of whatever's in your stash too because most of them don't require a certain size yarn. You can make my patterns out of pretty much anything because you're using measurements to determine the size of the fabric. So I just wanted to throw that out there. If you're interested in a review series by me, then let me know in the comments section below. Now to answer a couple of questions, my orange and onyx sweater that came out last week, I used one row stripe for the black. I had several people say, was it one row or two rows? It was one row of stripe. The two row stripe would make it easier and not have so many ends. And it would also make, obviously make the stripe a little bigger on the sweater. So if you're interested in that, you can certainly do that. The size of the stripe, and if you put a stripe in there at all, is totally up to you. But the pattern is written for a one row stripe. It's not hard to change it to two though, if you want to do that, or a three or a four, or whatever you want to do. So that's the answer to that question. In the description of my videos, now I'm putting a number, it'll say like number 10, number 11, in the description of the video. That is the number of the video from January 1st on. I'm going to number my videos so that I can go back and say in video number 10, I said this or that. And that way you can find it a lot easier than trying to look for a title of a video. I'm also going to try to put cards, which is um, a link to a video at the end of a video if I've mentioned a video in the video. So it'll be easier for you to find. You can just touch it and you can go to it without having to go down in the description box, find the link and all that. I will actually put what we call a card or an end screen on the, on the video itself and you can click that and go to it and watch it if you want to. So I'm going to try to be a little more active with that. It won't be on every video, but on some of the videos I'm going to try to add a video at the end so that if I mention something, you'll be able to go to it a lot faster. Now, uh, here is some progress on two projects that I'm working on diligently. And I uh, told y'all a long time ago that I was going to develop a pattern for a top-down sweater. And I'm doing that. I'm right in the middle of it. I'm excited about it. I hope it's going to work out. I'm, I'm working on it, ripping out, frogging, adding. So um, I, if you're a follower on Instagram, you will see the picture of this particular sweater. And I'm making it from comfy cotton. I may have already said this once, but I'm making it from comfy cotton blend, whipped cream, beautiful, beautiful, oh, really soft yarn. And then I'm also pairing it with uh, comfy Cotton Ocean Breeze, and this is quite beautiful, made up. I really like it. I didn't think I'd like it all that much, but I I thought, well, I want to contrast on this white sweater. I do want a little bit of contrast in a different color. And since spring is coming up, I decided to contrast it with the blue. So this is the neck. I'm working down over the shoulders, if you can see that, and... I'm going to stop the blue in the next couple of rounds and go back to the white. But if you'll notice these right here, this is where you split. And if you've made a top-down sweater, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about here. 
but at a, at a certain point under the arm you measure in my pattern you'll be measuring yourself so you'll know how big to make these how long to make these chains but the chain is what opens up the sleeve and so then you crochet along here and you make the body of the sweater so I'll keep you up to date on how this is working um, I may put some photos on Instagram so you can kind of see where I am I'll be working on this later today I um, am going to rest this afternoon and so while I'm resting I'm always crocheting so I'll be doing that I also last week talked about a sweater that I was making from the Knitology Titmouse colorway in fingering yarn which is very unusual for me I don't usually make sweaters from fingering yarn but I thought I would try it and I had a lot of people in the comment section say go 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 we love the fingering yarn because it's so beautiful you can find it on hand dyed yarn sites um, you can find it in yarn shops and it's usually so gorgeous and fingering yarn is very easy to work with it, it's you can use a smaller hook and on this particular sweater I held up the wrong hook I'm working with an H hook and that is a 5.0 millimeter hook this is my clover hook this one has the metal shaft I really like that I like it more than the 6.5 K hook that I'm using for the top-down sweater this is a plastic shaft on clover they do not make this out of metal probably because of the weight because this this H hook actually weighs more than this K hook because it has the metal shaft and I'm sure the metal shaft goes on down into the handle I have found the yarn to slide a lot faster off the metal shaft than the plastic this one doesn't really hang up but it doesn't go quite as fast I love my clover hooks though I'm not saying I don't like my clover hooks but I do love my clover hooks so this one I'm making with an H hook this is my fingering yarn sweater it's made from bottom to top it is not a top-down sweater this is bottom to top and I finished the back this is what it looks like I showed this to you the other day now this will have to be blocked because the mesh rows have drawn up just a tiny bit they're not terrible or anything but I will be needing to block that but I am finished with the back of the sweater this is the back of the sweater now so this goes to the shoulder and it's got a little bit of ease not much and it's about mid hip right about there right about mid hip there's my waist about mid hip I've started the front now and I have quite a bit done on that actually so I've done the bottom of the front see how that draws up just a little bit so it'll have to be blocked but this is what it looks like in the front it's the same as the back and I'll be making this with probably I'm going to I think I'm going to make it with a v-neck neckline and that way I can wear it in the spring and it won't be it won't be terribly hot so that's what I'm doing with that and that's the progress I've made on my fingering sweater I'm really excited to get that done I will be working diligently on both of these projects and like I said you can keep up with me on Instagram if you'd like and I'll be putting some photos out there of my progress so I will see you out there on Instagram now today is giveaway Thursday this week because tomorrow's Valentine's Day and I will not be videotaping tomorrow so I wanted to pick the winners for the giveaway today and if you hopefully you went down and put a comment in the comment section on Monday's video first of all the giveaway winner number one quickly will receive the glamour cow pattern of mine my glamour cow pattern and the yarn to make it with the the faux fur the fur yarn and also the knit crate um, really nice yarn I really like this I actually made the pattern from these exact yarns so you get the pattern and the yarn to make those with the second um, winner will receive two skeins of bamboo U and this bamboo U is uh, made in Turkey it's also somebody asked me the color is mercury it's a number four yarn and it is 
55% viscose from bamboo, so it's 55% bamboo, 45% wool. So it's very, very soft, and I'm sure you will love it. It's There's plenty of yarn on here. The yarn count is... The yarn count is 177 per skein. So that's ample yarn to make a nice scarf or whatever you want to make with that. So winner number two will receive the bamboo yarn. Giveaway winner number three will receive two skeins of yarn. One from Lion Brand, which is the Landscapes yarn. And this is the colorway Cabana. I've talked about this many times on my videos. And then this one, which is Red Heart Brand. Get it up here. This is Red Heart Unforgettable, and that's beautiful too. So these are both the same types of colors, only a little bit different yarn, but they're different brands of yarn. I really love these colors. They're beautiful for spring. So winner number three will receive those two skeins of yarn. So let's point the camera to the computer and see who the winners are this week. Okay, so here we are, and our URL from last Monday is up here on the screen in the random comment picker, and the keyword was bamboo. So let's find out how many comments we had with that particular keyword in there. So we had 684 comments. Thank you so much for participating. I appreciate each and every one of you. Winner number one who will receive the Glamour Cow pattern, the fur, and the yarn to make it is Annette. Dabney. Annette, you are the winner of the Glamour Cal yarn and pattern. So let's find out who our winner number two is. Winner number two who received the bamboo yarn is Pam Phillips. Pam, thank you for participating. You are the winner of the bamboo yarn. So let's pick another winner. Winner number three will receive the two skeins of beautiful yarn, Landscapes and Unforgettable. And that is Glenda Humphrey. Glenda, you are the winner of the Landscapes and Unforgettable yarn. So congratulations to all three winners. If you would, please send your mailing address to my email address, which is down in the description box. And I will get those in the mail to you as soon as possible. So I hope you have a wonderful weekend. I hope Valentine's Day is wonderful for you as well. Be sure to leave your comments down in the comment section about the three questions that I asked you about the crochet along on the 12 days of Christmas, any suggestions you might have about that, also about the review series. If you're interested in seeing that, let me know about that. And that way I can get some feedback from you to find out where you'd like me to go with my YouTube channel. So thank you all for subscribing. Thank you for liking and sharing my videos. Thank you so much for joining me. Every time I come on, I get the most wonderful comments in the YouTube world. So thank you so much. I, my subscribers are the very, very best. And I appreciate each and every one of you. So join me again Monday to find out what's on the hook.